What's up guys, it is me, the Dom Fnatic, and welcome to the GBA D-League Draft Analysis. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been waiting to uh, actually see this video uh, appear in your sub boxes somewhere. Um, so here it finally is. Yes, in case you didn't know, if you haven't seen news on Twitter, uh, if you haven't seen the streams, or if you haven't seen the announcement video on the Grand, uh, sorry, the GBA's YouTube, you will have actually seen that I am a part of the D-League uh, for Season 3. Um, so, really honoured to be here, full of some amazing battlers, all way better than me, so uh, seeing the season as a real big challenge. Game 1, Week 1, will be uploaded this Sunday, so I hope you get excited for that, but obviously before the matches get underway, it'd be good for you guys to actually familiarise yourself with the team and uh, the options we obviously have sort of going forward when we face our opponents sort of each week so um, I'm gonna apologize in advance if I start kind of humming or singing some music I've got some lovely childish Gambino on in the background uh, which you guys can't hear but I can't stand listening to my own voice while recording so I need something to listen to so without further ado we're gonna get uh, straight into the draft analysis I'm not gonna make it too in-depth purely because um, I mainly can't remember the reasons why I picked them on. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Um, I'm sure you guys will probably lose attention sort of after 20 minutes or so anyway. So uh, we won't, I don't want to keep you too long, but obviously I want to give you guys the idea as to uh, why I've picked what I've picked. So I have taken the, uh, the slides straight from the draft uh, uh, sorry stream. So you will have seen these before, but obviously we've now got them in order and I can go for them in sort of a a more in-depth sort of analysis than what you might have seen on the stream. By the way, excellent stream, Chase. Thank you very much for doing that and taking your time to do that for us. Um, without further ado, let's get into uh, my round one pick. I believe I was sixth overall in the draft. Now, there's only 10 people, so I'm pretty much bang in the middle along with a uh, fifth pick. So if I wasn't sixth pick, I was definitely fifth pick. So I was somewhere in the middle, which is both bad and good. Um, obviously, you're waiting a lot for wheel picks. Wheel picks can... Kind of screw your drafts over uh, monumentally, but you're also, you know, kind of eagerly waiting. Everyone else's picks either side of you, and you're, you're stuck in the middle. You're thinking, oh, great, well, what's going to be free when it gets to me? So I had to deal with what I could, um, and I still think my draft came out okay. But somehow, uh, my round one pick, I don't know how it lasted to me, to be honest. Um, you've actually seen it shadow uh, on the screen for the last two and a half minutes. Um, and uh, the round one pick we went for was the Mega Low Punny. Um, Megalopony is a pretty much a, a solid overall mon, to be honest, in, in Draft League. Any of you guys watching this probably have played in many Draft Leagues yourself, probably even tried Megalopony, and you know how quite simply amazing it is in Draft League format. It's got base 135 speed, which outspeeds a lot of uh, mons in the format, excluding obviously a lot of Scarfers and uh, the odd Pokemon which is above 135 base speed, something like your Mega Aerodactyls. Um, otherwise, this thing, you know, forces a lot of speed sort of creeping, uh, forces Scarfers, and it really hasn't got that great of a switch in, purely because of its ability in uh, Scrappy. Obviously, it stabs normal and fighting can hit ghost types, um, and the stabs it gets in return and high jump kick potentially drain punch as well if you want to run that kind of thing. On top of uh, its amazing move pool, elemental punches, fake out, quick attack. Um, let me just go over what it's got. It's got agility, baton pass is a huge, huge move for this thing. Um, it gets a lot of setup moves like cosmic power, uh, power up punch. Um, it gets healing wish, which is something that, you know, it is quite rare to have. But I think I have like three healing wish users on this draft, which is incredible. Um, it gets sort of the odd niche moves like magic coat, its special move pool is amazing as well. Um, it gets Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Shadow Ball. Um, I don't know if I said Ice Beam, I think I did. But it, it incredibly diverse move pool, and you would expect that from a normal type. It gets access to Thunder Wave as well. A fast Thunder Wave is lovely. Um, Switcheroo, maybe not so useful on a, on a Mega version. Obviously, if it was regular Low Punny, maybe. Um, but this thing's move pool is just so diverse. Its, it's attack is that is, is ridiculous at 136. It might seem lackluster at first, but when you start doing calcs for high jump kick, you know, high jump kick to hit KOs a lot of things. Um, things like flying types, which can take those, are not a switch in, because this thing does have, obviously, stab return. Uh, and ice punch, even if you've got a Skarmory, you know, thunder punch is there, it's a thing. And high jump kick is still going to be doing a, a massive amount of damage. So, overall, sort of round one Megalopony, I've never actually really used it in, sort of, great detail myself. 
I have taken over in a league where someone has had it before. So I've had some experience, but not massive experience. So I'm hoping sort of by the, the latter part of the season, this thing will really be doing a lot of work for me. And I know that this thing will struggle with bulky psychics. So I really need something in my draft. Maybe later, bit, a bit later on, maybe not straight away, that can deal with these bulky psychics. There's, there's still 10 rounds to go. There's still plenty of things I can take to, uh, to deal with these bulky psychics. But Megalopony is uh, the round one mod we have gone with. So... Um, obviously, like I said, I was sick from the draft. Uh, a few picks have been and gone. Next up, I was wanting to take a, a dragon. I want to start a dragon steel fairy core because it's proven in league to be an amazing core uh, that can be hard to break down, especially when you've got the correct mixture. So um, I figured, you know, I, I, it was either going to be between either of the Latties or it was going to be Salamence. The main reason being, obviously, they all have access to Defog. Um, they all have access to setup of some sort. They all have access to reliable recovery in Roost and Recover. Um, and they all hit really hard on both sides. Maybe not Latias so much, but, you know, they're versatile dragons that all fit really well uh, into my planned core. Mainly because they don't get hit by ground types, which obviously works really well with steel types. So, um, I believe Latios went by this point, And I was looking, thinking between Latias and Salamence. I believe both were there when I had the choice. Um, but in the end, we decided to go with Latias as our second round pick. Um, very justifiable, very good dragon uh, sort of pick, especially this early in the draft. It complements Megalopony incredibly well. Um, that's the main reason why I went for it over the um, Salamence in the end. Obviously, uh, Lopony is immune to the ghost weakness that the... Um, the, uh, my mind's gone blank, sorry, the Latias has. Um, it's also obviously got the Dark Weakness, which Lopini, you know, chews up because it's fighting type. Uh, and also the Ice Weakness. So, you know, Lopini can take out these Dark Types, these Ghost Types, and these Ice Types that will potentially threaten Latias. Um, sort of in return as well, uh, you know, things like uh, Psychic Types. Latias can switch in on Psychic Types and, and, you know, tank the hits and, you know, maybe hit them with Shadow Balls, Calm Mind on them, you know, Toxic Stall them can help with them bulky psychics so you know they kind of complement each other really well which is kind of the main reason why I decided to go with Latias over Salamence. Salamence in its own right is an absolutely amazing one uh, especially in league format but I think it's a much better sort of offensive dragon rather than uh, defensive which is kind of what I get in Latias but I am not saying that Latias by any means can't be run offensively that's kind of why I like this as well its versatility seems to be a bit better the bulk is better obviously it doesn't hit as hard as Salamence um, but it can still hit hard. You know, Draco will be hitting harder than Salamence's. Um, you know, I can run Calm Mind, which will benefit, you know, Dragon Pulse, uh, Draco Meteors, um, Psychic, Psy Shocks, Thunderbolts, Ice Beams, whatever I want to run this thing. Its move pool is incredibly diverse, which is another good thing. Obviously, Salamence's is diverse to a point, but I feel that the moves that Latias has access to um, sort of benefits its move pool uh, and its stats uh, a bit better. Obviously, it's got access to Defog. It doesn't take 25% uh, like Salamence would. Um, also, like I said, it gets access to things like Healing Wish. Um, again, Lopini obviously something has has that as well. Healing Wish is a fantastic move to carry on a team. You think your win condition is about to go? Nope. You click Healing Wish and, and it comes for free and, and gets healed up. You know, it's an amazing move. Again, Magic Coat. It's a screen mon, which I think Salamence can't do. Uh, obviously, Reflect Type is a fantastic move to run in League. It can catch so many people off guard. It actually gets Phasing and Raw, which is quite interesting. I didn't realise until looking now on a on Showdown, access to Tailwind. Again, Tailwind support. I'm pretty sure Salamence will get that as well. But again, a cool support move. Again, a fast Thunder Wave user, uh, a Trick user. Uh, it gets a Wish, so it can Wish Pass. I know Salamence can do that, but obviously that's hard to get around Jenning. And as this is a Wi-Fi league, let's just stick with Latias, you know. Um, we've got uh, Sucker Punch as well. It's got all these fantastic moves, which make it stand out as a really odd and really good dragon to have in a draft. So... That was what I went with uh, with with uh, my second round pick, which was the Latias. So we've got Lopany and Latias so far. Um, next up, I'm thinking I'm going to want to take a Fairy because they will start disappearing soon. I'm not entirely sure if any Fairies had really gone by this point, but they usually go quite quick. I think Tapu Koko had gone. Tapu Koko was like the one one I really wanted in this team because I just want to use it in a draft, but everyone knows how fantastic it is and just takes it as soon as they can. So... I think my options were potentially a Tapu, um, I, if there are any left, but I, they were probably gone, chances are by round three. Um, I still need a Stealth Rocker, um, 
a, a solid fairy with stealth rocks. There's only one that can come to mind immediately. No, that's not Wigglytuff. Um, it's the first time I've used this thing in uh, League format. That is uh, actually Clefable. Um, again, a really solid mon to work sort of in tandem with Latias and Lopany. Um, you know, a Clefable in its own right, you could just put on any team and it'll fill a hole and, and do a lot of things fantastically well. It's, it's fat. Um, it's got access to two amazing abilities in Magic Guard and Unaware. You can easily switch between the two week in, week out. Unaware stops set up in its tracks. You know, Magic Guard stops things like Toxic Stall, and you know you can set up without the you know the worry of having to be dying to Toxic or Burn, anything like that. It gets so many recovery moves. It gets such a diverse move pool because it's uh, original normal typing meant you know it had access to loads of amazing TMs. Um, obviously, because it's fairy typing now rather than normal. It now has some uh, an immunity to dragon, it has a lot more sort of offensive potential because obviously fairy hits more than normal does, and uh, fairy has more resistances as well. And we all know fairy is an amazing type really, as a whole, offensively and defensively. So Clefable seemed like a really good pick. Again, it's uh, it, you know it can go physically, especially defensive, the same as Latias can. So I can mix and match the defenses if needed, you know. Um, I mean, it's got access to amazing support moves. Like I said, Stealth Rocks, you know, Heal Bell slash Aromatherapy. It's move pool is so diverse. I know it's not going to be running physical, but you've got things like Blizzard, Body Slam, Brick Break, Counter even, Dazzling Gleam, obviously outclassed by Moonblast, but Drain Punch, Encore, fantastic support move to have. Fire Blast, Flame Thrower, Focus Blast, Fire Punch, Grass Knot, Healing Wish, again, a third Healing Wish user. Uh, ice Beam, Ice Punch, Knock Off, Light Screen, another Screener of course, uh, Meteor Mash, Power Up Punch, Psychic, Psy Shock, um, Thunder Wave, again another Thunder Wave user, another Trick user, another Wish Mob. You know its move pool is ridiculously deep along with Latias's and Lopunny's. So in the first three picks I've almost completed my Steel Dragon Fairy Core, I've got three mods with diverse move pools and that can run diverse sets. So I'm really happy with how this is looking so far. Now. That's all I can really say about Clefable. Um, it, it's like my first Stealth Rocker in the draft. I do get quite a few because um, I didn't want to be able to have to run Stealth Rock on this thing every time. It's got way more diverse move pool to be, you know, locked into Stealth Rocks every week. So to partner my Clefable and Latias, obviously I need the Steel type to complete the Steel Dragon Fairy core. We've got Latias, who is immune to the sorry immune to the ground uh, type moves, which Steel type would potentially be weak to. Um, and we've also obviously got Latias as a potential fire switch in as well, again, something that uh, Steel is weak to. And Latias and Clefable both cover the fighting weakness that Steel types uh, sort of, you know, uh, are weak to as well. So, my fourth round pick uh, is uh, Registeel. Registeel is fat. Um, admittedly, I do like to pick Mons that, you know, sort of defensively that do have reliable recovery themselves. So uh, this was this this might be slightly a pick out of my comfort zone, but it's also a pick that seems to fit really well um, with the Latias and the Clefable pick. Mainly, like I said, Clefable and Latias cover the weaknesses uh, of uh, sorry, yeah, Latias and Clefable cover the weaknesses of this Reggie Steel really well. In return, uh, excuse my voice crack. I've had a cold and a bad throat for ages. I I need to get that sorted really. Um, the Reggie Steel covers the dragon weakness Latias has, the ice weakness it has, it covers Clefable's weakness to poison because it's obviously immune, it covers Clefable's weakness to steel because it's resisting steel. You know, in tandem, this three work incredibly well. Now, the reason obviously, like I said, I like to have recovery on my mons uh, that are bulky, it's not too bad. Uh, it's kind of mitigated the fact it doesn't have reliable recovery itself in the fact that I have got three healing wish users uh, and two wish users so far. Uh, Clefable obviously having a big HP stat and you know Latias not being far off itself so it's able to perform those roles pretty well uh, both of them you know wish support if I need it um, and it can keep that Registeel healed. Now Registeel obviously has base 150 defenses in, in both sides so again it's, it's a flexible mod which can be defensive either side. Um, it's base 80 HP which isn't anything to really be laughed at. It's not low, it's not high. The only things that you know, sort of left to be desired are its attack stats. It does get access to um, seismic toss, so things that you know don't get that magical 404 HP. Better beware, no substitutes being set up on this thing. Um, I know we're not doing level 100, but you know it, we can still break subs with these uh, seismic tosses. Um, it does get a fairly decent move pool. You know, I can go for them explosions. It's got Iron Head. It's got Earthquake. It's got Stealth Rocks. Again, a Thunder Wave user. 
Uh, I promise I'm not drafting a team full of Thunderwave users. Um, but you know, the fact that I have this amount of speed control, I can literally run it on anything <laughs> on the team. Uh, there's a good chance that, you know, we've got 11 mons, 4 have Thunderwave. One of them is pretty much going to be coming every week. Um, so, you know, the, 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 divi the diverse move pools of the mons I have so far and the synergy work incredibly well. So that's kind of like the defensive side of things done for now. Um, we'll get into some more bulky kind of things a bit later on, but now I want to focus on offensive threats and things that can deal with the bulky psychics, which I said that uh, Megalopony might actually deal with. Uh, sorry, not be able to deal with too well. Um, so first up, I decided that you know I've got two stealth rockers. A third one would probably be enough for the draft, just so I can flip it up. Uh, you know, if I wanted to bring Profable and Registeel and Crocodile on the same team, it's going to get my opponents guessing. It's going to be I've just said Crocodile. I haven't even announced it to you guys. Well, now I've spoiled it for you. My third, my fifth pick, sorry, is Crocodile. Um, but I got this thing obviously as a final stealth rocker or another stealth rocker, I should say. Uh, it's a powerful knockoff which I needed. Uh, I believe Registeel and Clefable obviously do get knockoff, but this is a really powerful knockoff. Um, two fantastic abilities in Moxie and Intimidate. Um, you know, uh, bring a scarf set when all of his grand immunities are gone. What is your switch into a choice scarf? Earthquake, you know, and I, I get the plus one every single time I get a kill. Um, knockoffs, like I said, it's going to be able to get rid of items and damage them bulky psychics um, that Lopany isn't going to like. And you know, it's got other potential, uh, you know, coverage moves that, that it does get, you know, it gets Rock Slide, it gets Crunch, it gets Aqua Tail, uh, it gets Dragon Claw, the unstabbed Dragon coverage it, is always needed, obviously it gets set up in Home Claws, it gets Low Kick, Power Up Punch, Pursuit, another fantastic move which I definitely needed on this draft. I do get a couple of other Dark, uh, sorry, a couple of other Pursuit users in the draft, but I think this will probably be the most, you know, the most powerful uh, and useful one of the bunch. Um, you know, it's a fantastic move to have when you're partnering with Lopany. So, I feel like I've got a really good mom uh, in Crocodile, and I'm surprised it lasted this long because I appreciate it's a tier three, but it's definitely one of the best tier threes that's out there. Um, you know, uh, I do get another Intimidate user as well. So the fact that I have you know multiple Intimidate users, I've got you know the potential setup in Moxie. You know, uh, this thing I've got real high hopes for. Um, I love using this thing. I love its design. I love using it in game, black and white. Um, when it was first introduced, so I'm really, really, really looking forward to actually being able to use this thing effectively and uh, obviously partnering it up with Lop Honey. But um, I wasn't content with just having Crocodile as my sort of bulky psychic uh, dealing mon. Um, spoilers, Cresselia is drafted this season, so I think I'll be well prepared for that kind of thing, especially with my next pick, uh, the round six pick, which is Volcarona. Now, Volcarona is a mon that I've adored, again, since 5th gen, much like the Crocodile. Um, it's special attack, you know, off off the, the, the base, really. 135 is ridiculously strong. Um, it gets an awesome special bulk, base 105, 85 HP to go with that as well. It makes it for a fantastic special wall if I want to. Um, base 100 speed, very nice speed stat to have in league format. Obviously, I can run Scarf, I can run Specs, I can run Quiver Dance. Um, it's attack and defense obviously are not the greatest. Again, it's like a special base mon. That's its job. Um, and its move pool pretty much matches what it needs. You know, uh, Bug Buzz, it gets Calm Mind. I don't know why you use Calm Mind when you can get Quiver Dance, but you know. Uh, it gets Fiery Dance. Again, a move that can boost its special attack. And it's a base 80 power. It's nothing to laugh at. Um, Flamethrower, Flare Blitz, Giga Drain, Heat Wave. I'm just listing moves. Hurricane. Uh, again, Light Screen. It gets uh, Self Recovery in Roost and Morning Sun. It gets. Excuse me, it gets um, Psychic, Quiver Dance, like I said, uh, Tailwind, Toxic U-Turn, it even gets Wild Charge, I, I don't know why you'd need it, but it, it gets Wild Charge, it gets Will-O-Wisp, obviously at this point that's one sort of support move I haven't got, so, you know, on paper it's, it's move pool isn't maybe the most diverse, sort of offensively, um, it's definitely got a big enough move pool to be usable, um, uh, and obviously again, the Quiver Dance set is, is something that foes will pretty much always have to prepare for. The other good thing about Volcarona um, this season, for me, is that it is one of my free Z-Move users. Now, the GBA are kind of trialling something with us D-League coaches here. We've been given a separate 100 point budget to uh, basically buy Z-Move users. Um, tier uh, 1 is 80 points, tier 2 is 60, tier 3 is also 60, I want to say. Uh, tier 4 is 40 and tier 5 is 20. 
Um, so with Volcarona being tier uh, 2, uh, somehow, uh, it was uh, pretty much a no-brainer for me to be a Z-Move user. While its move pool isn't diverse, if I have plus 1 Volcarona, for example, um, with Fire EMZ, you're going to be taking a plus 1 Fire Blast, plus 1 Fiery Dance, plus 1 Flamethrower. You could potentially be taking a um, Z-Move Giga Drain. Um, all Z-Move versions, sorry. Um, so, you know, your, your Bloom Doom, your, uh, what's it called, Inferno Overdrives, your Supersonic Sky Strike with the Hurricane, the, I don't know, the Shattered Psyche with Psychic, you know, the, what's it called, what's the bug one? Savage Spin Out, that's the one, you know. While its move pool isn't most diverse, it definitely benefits from the Sea Crystal. Um, and like I said before, it doesn't have to be considered, you know, a, a setup mod every time. Choice Specs, Choice Scarf will be more than helpful in, in a lot of games, so... You know, people might sort of expect it to be set up, but it most definitely won't be all the time. Again, you know, the bug typing helping with uh, the, uh, the the bulky psychics. So, you know, if, if, if we have a very physically biased, you know, psychic type, I don't think they exist, but, um, you know, Volcarona will absolutely destroy them. Uh, and, you know, it kind of works with Crocodile pretty well, sort of. Typing wise, again, you know, um, obviously water is a common weakness. I have pretty decent ways of dealing with water uh, later on, plus in Latias. Um, obviously, I have a rock switch in with a crooked dial and the intimidate as well. I'm not going to be taking much from stone edges and rock slides. Um, and what else is there? There's ice, which obviously Volcarona is uh, pretty decent switching to, the crook can't take. Um, and obviously, again, you know, uh, I mean, this thing hits incredibly hard. Uh, I'm hoping that along with Crocodile, it can put in some good work this season and uh, and, and allow basically Lopini the freedom to, to do what Mega Lopini does and, you know, wreak havoc to opponents' teams. So, I would say that these guys are. Actually, no, I'd say there's one big pick left. We're going to have to start sort of delving into the lower tiers of, uh, of mons now. As you can see, we've got three free picks left a tier 5 and a tier 3. So. I believe uh, I take my tier 3 here. I'm struggling to remember which tier this mod actually comes from, but um, I decided that I would probably enjoy a, a spin blocker because I have got all these stealth rock users. Um, and I would also like rapid spin myself. Um, I don't want to have to rely on defog on the Latias. Uh, and I do also get some more defoggers and hazard removal a bit later on. Um, I didn't want to have to rely on defog in case I want to keep rocks up for them vital kills, but I also need to make sure that I get rid of rocks for my Volcarona. So um, I do end up going with the Delmise as my next pick. So again, this gives me some really powerful offense. Um, Obviously, it has like base 130 attacks with its ability, uh, Steel Worker. It pretty much gets stab on on Steel type moves without actually having the Steel typing, which works really well for it because it doesn't have that quad weakness to fire, which means it can probably live some of them clutch fire moves that you need to live. Um, but again, Anchor Shot, an amazing ability, a trapping move. Um, you know, I can take those things down that are going to cause travel to some things for the team uh, uh, and, and do the damage with Delmise. Again, like I said, it's a rapid spin user. Maybe not the best one out there, but again, it's an option. It's a spin blocker and a ghost type. Ghost types, I feel, are pretty underrated in draft um, and, and, and not drafted enough. So I'm really looking forward to actually trying to use this thing. It's a, it's a grass switching, so I'm immune to powders. I'm immune to leech seed. Um, you know, it gives me some uh, good typing sort of coverages. It, you know, it's that immunity to fighting and normal that Lopini might not like um, and, and Crocodile might not like as well. Uh, it's a, a ground switching which uh, both Registeel and potentially Volcarona might not like because um, the grass typing obviously resisting ground types. So again, it's a fantastic mod which seemed to fit my team really well. Um, obviously something that doesn't really get reliable recovery outside Giga Drain, but I do have them wish users and healing wish users which can uh, heal it up when necessary. And you know, it gets the moves that suit its move pool and stats sort of really well. Um, it's got Anchor Shot, like I said, that gives it, you know, it gets stabbed on uh, the, the steel moves. Brick Break, Earthquake, um, what else have we got? We've got Giga Drain, like I said, to get a bit of healing. Heavy Slam, Gyro Ball, it's a slow mon, it can benefit from Gyro Ball a lot. Um, it's something that can kind of deal with fairies that they might not expect. Um, I've got the Rapid Spin here, obviously Power Whip, I don't know if I mentioned that. Rock Slide, um, it gets Shadow Claw. It's a shame it doesn't get Shadow Sneak, that would be amazing. It does get Sword Stance, so it can set up. Switcheroo, I think that's like the third mon that, or fourth mon that has Trickle Switcheroo on my team. Um, Sword Stance, I believe I've mentioned that. You know, it gets incredibly good moves. While its sort of offensive move pool is quite shallow, it gets the moves that sort of cover the 
everything it needs to cover. Sort of more obscure moves, Aerial Ace, Brutal Swing, Bulldoze if I feel like I need to slow things down on the other team, uh, Phantom Force, uh, maybe there could be some meme Phantom Force, uh, White Herb or Power Herb set, whatever one it is. Uh, Payback could be quite an interesting move to have, uh, it gets Thief, so if I want to steal items, it even gets Whirlpool, uh, another trapping move, obviously Anchor Shot is probably the one to pick all day every day, but you know, it's, it's the weird moves on this thing which uh, could kind of surprise opponents, and I'm very much looking forward to using this thing, because it piqued my interest from playing Sun and Moon, uh, uh, myself anyway, so very much looking forward to using this thing. Um, next up, after Delmise, uh, I obviously wasn't satisfied with uh, enough sort of <laughs> well ways to take out Psychic Mons. I've already got one immunity, I've got a resistant Reggie Steel, uh, and I've obviously got Crooked and Volcarona to take it out, but I kind of wanted one final way of removing hazards, um, and you know, if I can stop making my team so, or, you know, support the team to get Megalopony in there as much as possible, um, I, I figured that there was one Mon which stood out to me. Bearing in mind I had to go tier 5 or use my free picks at this point, um, the one thing that kind of stuck out to me in tier 5 that fitted my role incredibly well was Skuntank. Um, Skuntank, obviously the dark type, covering its poison weakness to, uh, sorry, the poison's sort of typing weakness to Psychic, um, so obviously it's immune to that with the dark typing. Uh, it, it's a cool mon, it's got pretty evenly based sort of stats. Uh, it can be sort of defensive because its HP stat is base 103, it's ridiculous. Um, it gets some cool abilities in, or it gets a cool ability in Aftermath. Um, you know, it loses a the opponent losing a quarter of its health after it takes you out. Pretty handy if it's a setup mon that's pretty weak. Um, it it kind of stops that in its tracks alongside of Unaware Clefable. Um, so, I felt like it, it, you know, it fitted in really well. Again, it's a grounded, um, it's a grounded poison type. So it'll be able to deal with any toxic spikes that are there. I mean, I have Registeel that can switch in and not take damage. You know, Latias can come in and not take spikes damage and, and defog away. But I can't count on Latias for defogging every week. Um, uh, and also being immune to toxic spikes, which, you know, uh, can give Bulkimons uh, a problem. And, and I don't want that. So um, I, I felt like it fit the team really well. It's also a way for me to actually sort of hit fairies a bit harder because uh, outside of... Uh, Registeel, I don't have anything that has Stab, uh, you could argue Delmise with Anchor Shot, uh, or Gyro Ball can hit it, and obviously uh, Megalop gets Iron Tail, you know, you get the odd coverage move everywhere, Iron, Iron Tail and Crocodile, um, but you know, I thought there might be something that I, I might sort of struggle with, with Fairies a bit at this point, so Scun Tank definitely isn't anything to be slept on sort of offensively, it does get base 93 attack, you know, uh, poison Jab, uh, Crunch, I believe it gets Sucker Punch as well, yes it does, so Stab, Sucker Punch, it's a fast Taunt user, I say fast, it's base 84 speed, so it's a funny old speed tier, but it's definitely faster than a lot of, obviously, base 80s out there, so catch things out, again, it's a unique default user in that it's not a flying type, um, so it's not to Stealth Rocks when it wants to do it, it's got Foul Play, it's got Flame Pro and Fire Blast, Home Claws if I want to set up, Night Slash, Play Rough, Poison Jab, another Pursuit user, this is one I was hinting to earlier, one that can work incredibly well, um, you know, with uh, the Megalopony taking out them psychic types. Um, I mean, some other, maybe some more unique moves that are worth noting. I'm, I'm not really seeing any. Again, it gets Iron Tail, but, you know, stab poison type moves. Uh, payback could be an interesting move. Otherwise, not really too much to, to get excited about. But for a tier 5, I felt like it fit my team sort of incredibly well and, and filled the holes that I wanted to fill at this point. Um, so, uh, because of this, my last three months kind of got freed up to what I wanted to have. I need an electric type and I need an electric immunity. Um, because while my team isn't actually, I, I don't have any weaknesses to electric at this point, I will be picking up some ones which are weak to electric. Um, plus, an electric immunity is always nice because otherwise, uh, you know, I have a ground type and crocodile, but otherwise, there's three volts which is going everywhere. So, um, I need to. Oh no, sorry, Scun Tank I picked up as a. I messed up. Scun Tank was a free pick because it's tier 4, not tier 5. So I still need to pick a tier 5. I need to pick. Uh, and there were some funky combinations I could have had um, with sort of the remaining ones I could pick. So I apologise, Scun Tank was a free pick, not a tier 5 pick. Um, but my first tier 5 pick is going to be an Electivire. I can't seem to get rid of this thing, really, because uh, it's my go to cheap electric type. While it's obviously definitely not the best. Um, it's not the hardest Volt Switch user, uh, hardest hitting Volt Switch user. It is a hard hitter in its own right, based on 123 attack. 
Um, 95 special attack isn't anything to laugh at either. Its move pool is in incredible to fit both sort of stats, so it can run anything and your opponent has to try and figure out what it will be. It's, it's not the fastest electric type, and it's going to be this or Raichu, and I believe someone else may have picked Raichu. I didn't want to pick a Lolan Raichu because I already have a Psychic type of Natty Ass. Um, while obviously I have got the sort of Ghost and Dark type switch-ins to, to take those hits, I don't want to have to have another Psychic type. Um, and, I, you know, I'd have had to have gone for normal Raichu anyway because it does get that electric immunity and lightning rod. But Motor Drive is such a cool ability to have on this thing, and again, Vital Spirit, so I can dodge any sleep powders or spores that may potentially come my way. Um, I felt like Electivire was probably the better overall pick. Um, you know, it kind of gives me a nice speed here in 95, so he's got to try and outspeed this if he can't outspeed, you know, like the base hundreds. Um, so it kind of works in my favour, but again, it's it's sort of very varied move pool, uh, both physically and specially, kind of work in my favour. I have a lot of ones that can kind of. I say that, though I haven't got a lot of ones that can work either way, but. So, this is a mon that can work either way, physically or special. And I always think it's good to have a mon like that in your draft, so your your opponent is kept guessing as to what's going to happen with that mon. So, uh, that's pretty much the re reason I wanted the Lectify. I need a way to deal um, with any flying or bulky waters, you know. It's not the best way of dealing with them, but it's something that can do it, and it's an electric community. Um, so that's pretty much Electivire, not really much else I have to say, I'm sure a lot of you guys don't like it. I'm still on the, the fence about it, I love it as a Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but I just wish it was that little bit better. Give it a Mega Evolution in Generation 8, please. Um, next up, we're going to have to go for our second Tier 5 here, because I want to get a Hard Hitter as my last pick from a higher tier. Um, and because, like I said, I'm flexible, um, with the higher, well, I'm flexible still to fill. Um, there's lots of good things left still in the higher tiers, so I'm comfortable I can and choose what I need. So my second tier 5 is going to be Floatzel. Um, Floatzel is a mon which um, my dear friend Paulie Mac can definitely back up uh, for me and uh, Shardy as well. It seems to be picking up some kind of popularity in league format and I think quite rightly so. Um, I've been a fan of using this thing in PU for a long time. Now I know it's PU and it's not league format but Smogon tiers and league are completely different. This thing is tier 5. I don't believe it should be that low for what it can do. Um, it's got base 105 physical attack, base 85 special attack, and base 115 speed. That 115 speed tier is incredible. Outspeed those base 110s. Um, you can outspeed potentially things that are speed creeping like the Latias, um, which obviously is base 110 itself. Um, so uh, it's something that fits the speed tiers really well, especially along with Mega Lock as well. I've already given you its sort of mixed stats, so it can run physical or special or mixed sets. Um, it gets Swift Swim, so if I wanted to run, for example, max attack, max special attack, uh, no speed, and then run Rain Dance on it, for example, um, I, I can do. One thing I've just realised I forgot to say, Electivite is a Z-Move user. The reason why I remembered to say that is because Floatzel is also a Z-Move user. Um, we'll go over that in more detail in a second. Uh, Water Veil is an incredible ability to have on a physical attacker like Floatzel. It can't get burnt, it's a free switch into Will-O-Wisp. And then you've got to deal with it. Uh, it's pretty decent move ball. I'll give it that. It's got agility. Uh, Aqua Jet for priority. Um, I was lacking some decent priority. I've obviously got the Sucker Punch from Scum Tank. I've got Fake Out and Quick Attack on Mega Um And I have the Sucker Punch on Latias, which isn't exactly something you're going to expect for it. So. Um, but you know, it gets Aqua Jet, Aqua Tail, Baton Pass. Incredibly good move. And move that Me uh, Mega Lopany also gets. So you can definitely do some uh, stat passing shenanigans here. Uh, Blizzard, Brick Break, Bulk Up, Crunch, Facade, so if I do get Poisoned, for example, something that can uh, do a lot of damage. Uh, Hydro Pump, Focus Blast, Ice Beam, Ice Fang, Ice Punch, Low Kick, Power Up Punch, Pursuit, Final Pursuit user of the team. Um, uh, you know, they all, it all fits in so well. A Scald user, I need a Scald user to try and get some burns. Another Switcheroo user, um, and a Fast Taunt user, and it's also got Waterfall as well. Again, some probably less popular moves, but as a Z-Move user, it does get access to Dig. That's a Tectonic Rage if I ever need it for, like, a, a Steel type. Focus Punch if I want an incredibly powerful all-out pummeling. Um, what else has it got that I can use for Z-Moves? Iron Tail, so I can run the Corkscrew Crash. Uh, what else has it got that I could potentially use? Payback. I think everything on this planet gets Payback. Uh, Rock Team, if I wanted to run any kind of weird, um, what is it, Continental Crush. Um, I believe that's kind of it for weird moves. 
Um, it's move pool is pretty good uh, and, and versatile for what for what I need it to do. The speed stat works really well, uh, and I actually think uh, offensive water types are pretty underrated in draft, mainly because you know people often favour bulky water types. Quite rightly so, to be honest, because they are so good. So that's Floatzel, and finally, uh, the final Mon, it's kind of like an iconic Mon to me, it's one of my very favourite, it probably ties with Greninja as a favourite Mon of mine, um, and uh, it's the elder brother of the very famous Captain Brave Bird, which I came runner up in uh, Fufu and uh, Pokemon's PU Tawny with, that was Staravia, we're going to bring Captain Brave Bird Senior into the fray here, and bring in the Star Raptor. Um, I basically thought, you know, I need something that can just be a, a nuke button. And with Reckless, and Choice Band, and Brave Bird, and Double Edge, and Close Combat, this thing can do that so incredibly well. You can see why I want to have so much hazard removal. It has got hazard removal in its own right, but again, I'm not going to be bringing Staraptor as a hazard remover. Um, you know, it doesn't have a diverse move pool, but it gets enough to, to do work. Um, I'm looking at it now, it gets agility, I've already mentioned Brave Bird and Close Combat and Double Edge, all incredibly hard hitting moves, obviously Brave Bird and Double Edge getting that boost from Reckless, um, along with a Choice Band this thing it hits incredibly hard, Steel and Rock types aren't safe because Close Combat, you know, I predict the switch, you die uh, in two hits. Uh, niche move and final gambit, you know, bring max HP, max speed, Scarf to Raptor and just take something down immediately. I lied, this is another Pursuit user, so I've got four Pursuit users, so... Again, those bulky psychics aren't going to be having fun. Um, it's a U-turn user. Now, this is quite nice because I needed U-turn and uh, Volt Switch on my team. As you can see, the only sort of U-turn I had up until sort of, um, the last few turns was Volt Corona. So I now have got a U-turn and a Volt Switch kind of core in Staraptor and um, the, uh, what's it called, the Electivire. And they both work quite well. Um, obviously, Staraptor covering the ground weakness for Electivire and... Electivire covering the electric weakness for Easter Raptor. Um, you know, it gets up things like Tailwind, Whirlwind, Roost, Quick Attack, so some nice priority in there. Weird moves like uh, Heat Wave, if I need to bring it for, for something like, I don't know, uh, Ferrothorn. Um, some maybe less used moves, I mean, there's not really much else to really highlight here. Mirror Move, I mean, Z Mirror Move on this thing would have been kind of cool. Should have considered that, really. Um, I mean, Sky Attack would have been nice. It gets Steel Wing, so it can hit them fairies if needed. It gets Work Up, so it does get set up. Uh, and it does get Thief, so, it, uh, you know, a dark move, but not something I, I think I'll ever be bringing. So, um, this move pool's not diverse, but when you bring Staraptor, your opponent sees it. They know what it's going to do, but they still can't really do anything about it. So, that was my reasoning uh, for bringing Staraptor into the fray. So, you can see on there, uh, on the screen in front of you, I'll leave the Staraptor tab up there for a second. That is the whole draft. We have got Latias, Volcarona, Crocodile, Delmise, Registeel, Electivire, Megalopony, Fable, Skuntank, Floatzel, and Staraptor. It is a draft that I am really looking forward to using. Um, probably one of the better ones I've drafted as well. Many people have said that they like it. Many people want to support me because of the draft. And I'm hoping that my sort of whiny breaking voice with a, with a blocked nose and, and a cough and a cold isn't putting you off this. But I really hope you can get behind the team too and, and look to support the Norwich Skitty this season in the D-League. Um, that's pretty much it for the draft analysis. I said I didn't want to go into too much detail and I didn't want to ramble on. But I know I've gone into maybe not too much detail, but I've definitely rambled on. I am the master of rambling on. Um, I just, before we want to go, uh, I do want to actually just uh, say thank you for some fan art which I received and I have forgotten your name, I have got it here, let me just quit it, get, get it up for you. Uh, it's Horus293 on Discord, I'm sorry I don't have your Twitter or anything, um, but he did actually make me um, a lovely piece of fan art. You're going to see a black screen there, so professional, um, but you know, he's just put a nice little picture here of the squad. Um, the Norwich Skitty for the D-League Season 3, so thank you very much for that, Horace. Um, I haven't told you, I'll put this in the video, so I hope you see this, and that's a nice little surprise for you. Um, but it highlights the team quite nice as well, because it does give you the Z crystals on these things, actually, as well, which which works quite nice. Um, but that's it for the analysis. Let me, uh, let you, sorry, please leave comments of, uh, what you think of the draft. You know, if there's any potentially, kind of, things that I could mix up, change for the team that might, you know, help the, the synergy of it. 
I think like I think we've got some good synergy going on here. Uh, lots of things covering each other's weaknesses. Decent immunities. Uh, you know, good hazard removal, good hazard options. I know spikes is and toxic spikes is something I'm missing. Um, so it could potentially be something I can try and fit into the team a bit later on. Uh, sort of once the season's underway. Um, but that is it for the draft analysis, guys. Thank you very much for um, actually taking your time and watching this video. Like I said, leave comments on what you feel, uh, how the draft has gone. Um, let me know if you're going to be supporting me this season. Um, week 1 against Aberforth is up on Sunday. Um, I will give you a heads up. We've played already and we had to play on Showdown, unfortunately. Purely because he's in Australia, I'm in the UK, and our internet just decided not to like each other. Never had that issue before, but I believe that's probably what the issue was. Um, still a very good game, and one you should be very excited to, uh, to see. Alright, so thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I uh, hope you did enjoy, and I will see you next time. Bye!